Okay, now is the time for the negative cross-examination of affirmative. Turretin fan, you have 20 minutes to cross-examine Mr. Albrecht. You may begin when you're ready. Mr. Albrecht, would you agree that Trent's definition of transubstantiation is the official Roman Catholic position? Uh, absolutely. It's uh, basically re- reiterating what uh, was defined at the Fourth Lateran Council. That is correct. What was... Do, do you have in front of you what the fourth letter oh, is? I'm said? sorry, I don't. I can pull it up. No, no that's okay. Okay. I, I'll be able to pull it up. All right, uh, okay. But let's uh, see. What, you... what Trent basically did, so I can uh, set it, make it clear right away, the reason it reiterated it was because a lot of the canons were uh, anathemas that were put down basically at Trent, which is one of the reasons why it reiterated the teaching of the fourth letter in council. Well, what I have in front of me as the teaching of the fourth letter in council is this. It says, in which there is the same priest and sacrifice, or excuse me, there is one universal church of the faithful outside of which there is absolutely no salvation, in which there is the same priest and sacrifice, Jesus Christ, whose body and blood are truly contained in the sacrament of the altar under the forms of bread and wine, the bread being changed, and that's where transubstantiato uh, comes into effect, by divine power into the body, and the wine into the blood, so that to realize the mystery of unity, we may receive of him what he received of us. And this sacrament no one can effect except the priest who has been duly ordained in accordance with the keys of the church, which Jesus Christ himself gave to the apostles and their successors. Uh, now, that's what I have. Does that sound uh, like that, it's the correct and complete? Uh, that that sounds rather accurate. I'm not sure. I, I I thought it was a little bit lengthier, but that does sound rather accurate. But um, but if you're saying that's exactly what Lateran says, well, I I agree. Well, I'm I'm going here off of the medieval source book. The uh, this is from uh, the Fordham Edu website. I'll I'll pop a link into our. Uh, to our chat, so you'll have access to it if you need. Right? It yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I definitely like to see that, so I can be able to. There you go. Okay, so I can be able to follow along. Okay, and uh, now, b- b- before you go on, uh, j- just around where can I find this? There, uh, okay. Well, it's towards the top. It's uh, if you scroll down, it's maybe the second or third pair. Let's let's see. Uh, uh, it looks like it's about the 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 paragraph, the third par- full paragraph there, where it says there is one universal church, the faithful, outside of which there's absolutely no salvation. Great. Okay. And we're not going to debate that. Uh, that that's right. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Extra crazy. Yeah. Nellis Alice said but, be a good okay, debate. So, uh, yeah. The um, what I would like to point out is that there's nothing there that uh, that says uh, now. Maybe someone we, we could say that it doesn't say that it's only a sign or invert, uh, figure there, but it doesn't say anything there that I can see about the divinity and the soul in that in that definition. Is that correct? Right. I, I do not see that here. I don't see that here. That's correct. Okay. So to the extent that there's any difference between the two, uh, the it's not the well. I, I think it's not we're, the broader we're, of the two, but the narrower of the two. That right. We're regardless, combined. regardless of whether there's any difference here or not, I think in your opening statement you pretty much defined exactly what transubstantiation is, and I think I did that as well. Now, you know, I think we're on the correct wavelength, no matter what. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, with that in mind, do you, do you do you agree that that part of transubstantiation is that the whole Christ is going contained under each species and under every part of each species. Without a doubt. That is definitely the, the definition of transubstantiation. You're correct. Okay. The whole right. complete Christ, yes. Okay. Now, in your reading of Augustine, uh, I, I'm sure you have seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you've seen many cases where he says, or at least a few cases where he says, that the bread is or becomes the body of Christ. Is that, that correct? Is, that, that? Absolutely, that's correct. That, that's definitely correct. Have you ever seen one where he says that the bread becomes the whole Christ? Where he uses that type of terminology? No, there, I have never seen a passage where Augustine says the bread becomes the whole Christ. He, I'm not aware of him using such terminology. Okay. And that, that terminology, a whole Christ, of course, is, isn't dependent on the uh, – isn't dependent on Aristotelian – Oh, absolutely, not not at all, not at all. And 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 to to clear things up, as as I would argue, I do not believe that Augustine would need to uh, make such a statement to affirm that he believes in basically the teaching of transubstantiation. 
Well, do you 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 don't think that he would need to say what? I do not think that I don't I don't yeah exactly I don't think Augustine would need to say uh, if he were to say for instance uh, uh, the bread contains the whole Christ and the 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 wine contains the whole Christ being the blood uh, in and of itself. I don't think that he would need to. uh, you know, basically say that because I think in a number of his quotes, I think he brings out the fact that he did believe that the elements changed in the, into the uh, body and blood of Christ. I think that's brought out clearly, regardless of him saying that or not. Oh, well, OK, let me uh, let me distinguish. So it's one thing if he, he doesn't use I mean, people we're not going to force. I, I'm not going to try to force you to, to say he used the word transubstantiation because I remember you saying up front uh, something to the effect of that exact word he didn't use. Absolutely, he, it, it would be it would be uh, incorrect for me to say that he used that word. It, you know, it wasn't around during his time. And possibly, maybe you don't agree with me, but possibly, even if we were to you look at the exact word that's used in the Fourth Lateran Council, well, somebody could hold to the Fourth Lateran Council, and maybe, arguably, maybe they they wouldn't hold to absolutely every detail that's there in, in Trent. Trent's more full. And more complete. So even just using the word doesn't necessarily it's kind of like people who say that they believe in the divinity of Christ. Some of them actually say, yeah, but by that, I mean, thus and such. And it turns out not to be right. They could have a they could they could have a completely different uh, mindset of what they mean when they say I believe in the divinity of Christ. I, I definitely agree with you. An individual can definitely uh, look at Lateran and see what Lateran says. And, of course, it, it, there's no telling, but then look at Trent and misunderstand it or, or what have you. That, that's definitely a possibility. Okay, so so the question isn't really exactly which words he used, but, but he doesn't use the words transubstantiation. He doesn't use the words the whole Christ. <laughs> Absolutely uh, not. He does not use the word transubstantiation. Or, or whole Christ. Or, or I'm, I'm not aware of him using the word whole Christ. Uh, oh, sure, perhaps yeah, he did. I'm, I'm not aware of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm went throughout this discussion. If I say he, he never did this, or he, I'm just basing on what you know of him. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm. Yeah, he's a very prolific writer. So. Right. He's written a lot. I'm. I'm not aware. I. I you know, uh, from what I've seen. In my honest assessment of his of his text dealing with the Eucharist, I have not seen him uh, use the specific terminology that says whole Christ. Okay, I could be and, wrong. Uh, have you ever, in in what you you've read, have you ever seen him talking about the the, the bread becomes the blood of Christ, or is it all, is it always the bread becomes the body of Christ? Um, actually, trying to look for it right here. Give me one moment. Let's see. Um, the one passage that I would point to would be when he's pointing out. I, I'm trying. I, I read it in my opening statement. Okay, here it is. Uh, the one passage that I would point to you for that question would be in his uh, sermon 227, when he says, "That bread that you see on the altar and that has been sanctified by the word of God is the body of Christ." And he, he, he uh, in other passages, and even in this one, he he goes forward to say that uh, that after the sanctification, uh, it is it is now become the body of Christ. He actually uses the Latin feet, corpus Christi, and he says it becomes uh, the body of Christ. Uh, and he also says that for the blood as well. What do you think is the significance of feet there? What do I think is the significance? I think the significance mm-hmm. of the whole passage, and uh, if you want, I could pull up the Latin on it. I think the significance of the whole thing is for him to basically be saying that after we have the sanctification, which would be the basically the prayer, the prayer over the elements, we now have the elements uh, becoming as he later says, becoming, changing into the body and into the blood of Christ. I think that is the strongest affirmation that Augustine did believe in uh, the teaching that is uh, highlighted within transubstantiation. But of course, it's uh, feet. It's yeah. If we're going to start in Roman letters, it's F I T. That is correct. It, it doesn't. It has a, a range of semantic <clears throat> meaning, which. Broadly, can mean become in, in some way. It doesn't doesn't limit the way in which something becomes it. In other words, you could say that a, a tree became a chair by the fact that somebody carved it. That would be one way in which a tree could become a chair. Right. So, okay. I see. I see and, the analogy you're attempting to make. Yeah. And a, a a chair could become a battering ram because someone uses it for that purpose. In the word become has that kind of broad sense. You don't even have to make any change to the chair itself to make it into a batting ram. You just change the use of the chair. Right, you see what okay. I'm saying? 
Oh, I, I see exactly what you're saying. I think it's, a, I think you're bringing up a fantastic point. I think the, the, the fact of itself that the, the sanctification, uh, is what is tied in to it becoming the, or, or, or it being or, or, or turning to whatever phraseology you'd like to use into the body and the blood of Christ. I think it's very important that Augustine, he, he not only uses that, that, uh, once, but he returns to that point many times over that it is a sanctification that brings about the body and the blood of Christ. I think that tied in to the Latin, I think that highlights it even more, and I think that brings out the clear point that he means that it's changing, it's becoming, as he would later use, changing into the body and the blood of Christ. And well, speci- uh, specifically in Sermon 228b. Now, now uh, the uh, stick... Okay, so sticking with the question about the... This this example you gave from sermon I think the first example you gave was from sermon 227, <clears throat> and in that example what you what you mentioned was uh, the fact that it says that uh, after the the uh, sanctification or after the consecration the uh, uh, the bread becomes the body of Christ but it doesn't say that the bread becomes the body and the blood of Christ right. Uh, no, it, specifically it says that bread you see in the altar and that has been sanctified by the word of God is the body of Christ. That is exactly, literally what it says in the English. Now, and, and actually, the, uh, that bread, he refers to it as bread, not just as the body. Right? The, the, uh, absolutely. He says that bread that you see in the altar that has been sanctified, and as you'll see in, in, in uh, for instance, uh, let me look at – hold on. Uh, he – there's another location where he uses the same phraseology. I, you know what? I don't have it in front of me. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so it's in Sermon 130. He says something very similar. He said, who, who is the bread of heaven except Christ? But in order that man might might eat the bread of angels, the Lord of angels became a man. If this had not happened, we would not have his flesh. And again, he goes back to the same terminology where he says, if we do not have his flesh, we would not eat the bread of the altar. Definitely – um I think it brings out the clearness, the fact that Augustine believes that the sanctification over the elements changes the elements as, uh, as he evinces uh, in his sermon 228 uh, into the, uh, the body and the blood of Christ. In this, but, in, in, but, but let, me, let me be clear. In 227, he, he, let me be clear about what I, I don't want to, to, to seem to be misleading you. He says specifically that bread that you see in the altar and that has been sanctified by the word of God, he, he basically points out that that is uh, the body of Christ. Yes, yes, he does. And but yet he also calls it bread, correct? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, even after the consecration, he's calling it bread, right? Uh, let me see. I mean, he's, he says that it has been consecrated in, in Sermon 227, if I remember what you just said correctly. Actually, he says that bread you see on the altar, and after the sanctification of the Word, uh, word of God, it is the body of Christ. We, we do not, he does not uh, bring up the word bread again. Uh, all he says is, through these things, the Lord Christ wishes to trust uh, to us his body and his blood, he tells us, which he says, which he shed for us under the remission of sins. So uh, he clearly tells us, through these things, Christ wished to entrust to us his body and his blood. He doesn't mention uh, the term bread again. In Augustine Sermon 227, PL 38. You can look that up right now if you'd like. I have a, I have a copy of the English translation, and I have uh, access to Latin here pretty easily. But Okay, I, I apologize. And I, I know I can't ask the question, but if you do see the word bread there, perhaps you can bring that up. Uh, maybe I'm incorrect here. Maybe, I've, maybe I'm missing a word here in the translation I got in, I've got in front of me. No, I, I, I don't have a – I don't necessarily have a problem with your translation – I'm, okay. I think that our difference is going to be over the implications <clears throat> of this trans, of, of the translation. But Perhaps. Yeah. The aside. For, okay. So we have uh, now. I, I just want to make sure we're, we're straight because there's he has two sermons. He has sermon two two seven and he has sermon two seven two. And you're referring to two two seven. Is that? I just want to make sure I'm correct. Absolutely. I have I've, what I've got. Well, I've got I've got more than one sermon open in front of me, but uh, specifically on his uh, sermon 227 on Easter Sunday, PL 38. I've got another one that I've been referring to. I mentioned it in my opening statement, but um, no, I do not. I, I don't think I've got 272 open. No, I don't. I have not been okay. referring to that, at least not in my cro- and not in your cross examination time. Perhaps I mentioned it in my opening, but I, I, don't, I do not think so. I don't have it open in front of me. I ju- yeah, I, I just figured that it's important for us to be. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, about about what the what the evidence is that we're dealing with. Absolutely. So, uh, now, uh, 